Hola. Oh, your name is great. And greatly to be praised. Yes, your name is great. And greatly to be praised. Lord, your name is great. And greatly to be praised. Hello and welcome. Benjamin John. I am Benjamin John. I welcome you and I thank you for joining us here at Living Hope Christian Center. Jesus is Lord and Christ over Living Hope Christian Center. The chance that you are here is a testament to the fact that God has ordained you to be a part of this meeting. Again, you are welcome. Here at Living Hope Christian Center, we believe that Jesus is Lord and Christ, and He is the head of this assembly. And I am His servant. He has entrusted me as a custodian of His gospel for this particular house. And I'm grateful to God. This is a vision that was given by God. There's no one that can fulfill God's vision by Himself. So there's a path for everyone. This is a place of love, a place of hope a refuge for anyone that has any issue or anyone that needs to maintain their peace <clears throat> and joy. At Living Hope Christian Center, it begins with Jesus and ends with Jesus. Jesus is Lord over this assembly. As you pray and meditate on your part for this commission, I want you to prayerfully consider being a part of this family with the great gifts that God has given you. God has given each and every one of us great gifts of one purpose to edify his body. And we are the body of Jesus Christ. I pray that Lord Jesus will appear to you and reveal himself to you via his word. Again, you are welcome. Thank you and God bless you. Hello and welcome. Benjamin John. I am Benjamin John. I welcome you and I thank you for joining us here at Living Hope Christian Center. Jesus is Lord and Christ over Living Hope Christian Center. The chance that you are here is a testament to the fact that God has ordained you to be a part of this meeting. Again, you are welcome. Here at Living Hope Christian Center, we believe that Jesus is Lord and Christ, and He is the head of this assembly. And I am His servant. He has entrusted me as a custodian of His gospel for this particular house. And I'm grateful to God. This is a vision that was given by God. There's no one that can fulfill God's vision by Himself. So there's a path for everyone. This is a place of love, a place of hope a refuge for anyone that has any issue or anyone that needs to maintain their peace and joy. At Living Hope Christian Center, it begins with Jesus and ends with Jesus. Jesus is Lord over this assembly. As you pray and meditate on your part for this commission, I want you to prayerfully consider being a part of this family with the great gifts that God has given you. God has given each and every one of us great gifts of one purpose to edify his body. And we are the body of Jesus Christ. I pray that Lord Jesus will appear to you and reveal himself to you via his word. Again, you are welcome. Thank you and God bless you. Hello and welcome. 
Benjamin John. I am Benjamin John. I welcome you and I thank you for joining us here at Living Hope Christian Center. Jesus is Lord and Christ over Living Hope Christian Center. The chance that you are here is a testament to the fact that God has ordained you to be a part of this meeting. Again, you are welcome. Here at Living Hope Christian Center, we believe that Jesus is Lord and Christ and He is the head of this assembly. And I am His servant. He has entrusted me as a custodian of His gospel for this particular house. And I'm grateful to God. This is a vision that was given by God. There's no one that can fulfill God's vision by Himself. So there's a path for everyone. This is a place of love, a place of hope, a refuge for anyone that has any issue or anyone that needs to maintain their peace and joy. At Living Hope Christian Center, it begins with Jesus and ends with Jesus. Jesus is Lord over this assembly. As you pray and meditate on your part for this commission, I want you to prayerfully consider being a part of this family with the great gifts that God has given you. God has given each and every one of us great gifts of one purpose to edify his body and we are the body of Jesus Christ. I pray that Lord Jesus will appear to you and reveal himself to you via his word. Again, you are welcome. Thank you and God bless you. Praise the Lord. Praise Jesus. We praise God. We give God praise. I thank you for joining us today. And please be sure to share this teaching. And God bless you. We will go straight into the word and we're going to take a word of prayer. Let's open our Bible to the book of 1 Timothy chapter 2, beginning from verse 1 to 4, and I read, I exhort therefore that first of all supplications, prayers, intercession, and giving of thanks be made for all men, for kings and for all that are in authority, that we may lead a quiet and peaceable life in all godliness and honesty. For this is good and acceptable in the sight of God our Savior, who will have all men to be saved and to come unto the knowledge of the truth. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. <laughs> Praise Jesus. We are going to pray. Let us pray. Almighty Father, in the mighty name of Jesus, we thank you for the privilege to gather again at your feet. We give you praise, glory, honor, adoration. Father, we bless your holy name. Bless are you, Lord God, King of the universe, to whom all praise, all adoration, all honor, all thanksgiving and deep appreciation is all becoming unto. Thank you, Jesus. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, we have given thanks. Amen. Father, we commit all ordained souls before the foundation of the world. The foundation of God standeth sure. The Lord knoweth all those that are his. Lord, we commit them unto your own care and we stand in the God to call them in, O oh Lord. We pray that salvation will appear to the homes of all who are ordained for eternal life that are watching this broadcast, that will yet watch, and that those who are watching, oh Lord, that those that they are standing in the gap for, oh Lord, that they be saved in the name of Jesus Christ. Father, we pray for salvation to meet them wherever they are in the journey of life. That the grace of God that brings salvation will appear to them. This is your will, oh Lord. And we have prayed your will, which is your word. And this is the confidence we have that we have received our answers. We bless your name. We cover this broadcast with the blood of Jesus. Upon the equipment, the cameras, the internet, the home that are watching, and all that will yet watch, oh Lord. Father, we thank you that they are protected. Blessed be your holy name. 
in Jesus' mighty name we have prayed. Amen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Praise Jesus. Hallelujah. We continue today with our series, Advancing the Kingdom of God. Praise the Lord. Advancing the Kingdom of God. Hallelujah. And uh, let me just say this. If you are new to this broadcast, if you are watching us for the first time, after we are finished, I strongly encourage you to revisit our earlier introductory series where we discuss the fundamentals, the premise, if you will, of the kingdom of God. So that when we say the kingdom of God, you'll be up to speed where we are. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. And so now let's get to business. Let's take our three anchor scriptures. Beginning with Genesis chapter 1, verse 28. Genesis chapter 1, verse 28. Let's read Genesis 1, 28. And I read, the Bible says, And God blessed them, and God said unto them, Be fruitful and multiply, and replenish the earth, and subdue it, and have dominion over the fish of the sea, and over the fowl of the air, and over every living thing that moveth upon the earth. Praise the Lord. This is the will of God, that you be fruitful, that you are blessed, that you have dominion over every creeps, on the earth, praise the Lord, that you be furnished in abundance. So let's say that in our spirit, in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Now let's go continue to the second anchor scripture. Genesis 12, verses one to three. Now the Lord has said unto Abraham, get thee out of thy country and from thy kindred and from thy father's house unto a land that I will show thee. And I will make of thee a great nation, and I will bless thee and make thy name great, and thou shalt be a blessing. And I will bless them that bless thee, and curse him that curseth thee, and in thee shall all families of the earth be blessed. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. This is the will of God. God will bless those who bless you. And God will curse him that, that try to curse you. Who is that him? Satan. He is a cursed one. And anyone who tried to curse you has joined ranks with Satan. Why? Because this is a covenant. God is involved in what you are involved in. And so God will stop anyone who tried to stop you. Praise the Lord. All of this is in Christ Jesus, praise the Lord. Let's take our third anchor of scriptures. Matthew chapter six, verse 33. Matthew chapter six, verse 33. The Bible says, but seek ye the first, seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all these things shall be added unto you. You seek God, you seek his kingdom, and you seek his righteousness. And all these things shall be added unto you. Jesus is the rock of our salvation. We are hid in him. Our life is hid in him. And so that if you are in Christ Jesus, you partake of the covenants of promise. So all of this will take place. And you will see God fulfill them in your life. Why? Because God is a covenant-making and a covenant-keeping God. In the first covenant, which is the Old Testament, he ratified that covenant first with the blood of animals and then with the blood of circumcision of a man. When man was circumcised, blood flowed. So you see that? Abraham was circumcised and blood for that of ratify that covenant. So now you know. And then we fast forward to the new covenant, the new testament. God now ratify this covenant with the blood of God. So you see that God is a covenant making 
and a covenant keeping God. And what he spoke to us in the book of life, the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus is a covenant. And because Christ dwells in you, that law of the spirit of life that have delivered you from the law of sin and death and now transferring to the law of the king of the of, it, of, 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 the, of his dear son now dwells in you. Praise the Lord. So we settle that too. Now we are going to continue with the theme that we have been examining for the past several months now. That is under this advancing the kingdom of God series part 68. Advancing the Kingdom of God series part 68. Today, we are going to continue with the sub part series, which is the spirit of sin and knowing. Praise the Lord. The spirit of sin and knowing. Let me, before I go further, let me just show you one thing. Let's go back to the book of Genesis quickly. We're going to read Genesis chapter, chapter 1, verses 1 to 3. Let's read. In the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth. Verse 2. And the earth was without form and void, and darkness was upon the face of the deep. And the Spirit of God moved upon the face of the waters. You see that? Darkness, tempest was there. Between verses 1 and 2, thousands of years have passed. Satan has been cast down from heaven. And he has wreaked havoc. But look at that. In spite of the darkness, in spite of the void, one thing stands clear. When God speaks, every natural element must give way including darkness and the kingdom of darkness. Verse 3, and God said, let there be light, and there was light. So light, the dominance of light over darkness is absolute and complete. That's it. So why do I say this? Darkness has always been, been there. Tempest of life have always been there. But what do you see? Do you see the tempest or you see the word of God? This is how God has ordained from the beginning that we see light, which is the word of God. And darkness must flee. This is what we have been examining for the past several months about the spirit of seeing and knowing. We have examined so many different examples in the scriptures of challenges people face, and then the solution because of great light, revelation knowledge of the word of God. And who is that word? Jesus Christ. The increase in the revelation knowledge of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, always we make way. But why? All things are under his feet. All power, he holds it in his hand. So this is why when you open the book of life to read, what do you see? Let's continue. To Deuteronomy chapter 34, verses 1 to 4. Deuteronomy chapter 34, verses 1 to 4. Let's read. And Moses went up from the plains of Moab onto the mountain of Nebo, to the top of Pisgah, that is over against Jericho. And the Lord showed him all the land of Gilead unto them, and all Naphtali and the land of Ephraim, and Manasseh, and all the land of Judah unto the utmost sea, and the south, and the plain of the valley of Jericho, the city of palm trees unto Zoar. And the Lord said unto him, This is the land which I swear unto Abraham, unto Isaac, and unto Jacob, saying, I will give it unto thy seed. I've caused this to see with thy eyes. As you see it in the book of life, you take it. So what do you see? Because at Mount Nebo, you see things that 
no other man can see or, or you know things that no other man can know. And you see it the way God sees it. And we said, we have said it before, we keep saying it again until you really enter into you, the Spirit of God. That encounter with Jesus Christ, who is the Word, is the spiritual climbing of my neighbor. In him, you will see things that others don't see and know things that others don't know. And you will see the way forward. Notwithstanding any darkness, tempest, or obstacles. Because there's nothing that can stand the world. Who is Jesus Christ? Praise the Lord. Everything that has a name must bow at his name in heaven, on earth, and the sea. Praise the Lord. So settle that. Today, we're going to continue with two examples that illustrate obstacles and what they saw and what they did. Two examples and then we're close in a few minutes we have let's open our bible to the book of first samuel chapter 17 verses 1 we read now let's see this now the philistines gathered together their armies to battle and we are gathered together at shoko which belonged to judah and pitched between shoko and azeka in a first damen and Saul and the men of Israel were gathered together and pitched by the valley of Elah and set the battle in array against the Philistines. And the Philistines stood on a mountain on the other on one side on the on, on, on the one side, and Israel stood on a mountain on the other side, and there was a valley between them. And then went out a champion out of the camp of the Philistines, named Goliath of God whose height was six cubits and a span. And he had an helmet of brass upon his head. And he was armed with a coat of mail. And the weight of the coat was 5,000 shekels of brass. And he had greaves of brass upon his leg and a target of brass between his shoulder. And the staff of his spear was like a weaver's beam. And his spear's head weighed 600 shekels of iron and one bearing a sheet went before him. And he stood and cried unto the armies of Israel and said unto them, Why are ye come out to set your battle in array? Am not I a Philistine and ye servant to Saul? Choose you a man for you and let it come down to me. If he be able to fight with me and to kill me, then we will be your servants. But if I prevail against him and kill him, then shall ye be our servants and serve us. Praise the Lord. And the Philistines, look at that. And the Philistines said, I defy the armies of Israel this day. Give me a man, together we may fight together. When Saul and all Israel had these words of the Philistines, they were dismayed and greatly afraid. Look at that. This is an example of what is happening in the life of many believers today. These are a covenant people we are with God and have seen what God has wrought in Israel. And for thousands of years, they have been studying what God has wrought. They have the Bible. We don't have it. We are new into this. And they saw the hands of God from Egypt all through the wilderness, and here they are. Here they are. Let me give you one example of the ultimate miracle that they had while they were in the wilderness. The Bible said that for 40 years, their natural they were not their their, 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 their strength was unabated, and that none of them fair sick. None of them changed their sandals or shoes. What does that mean? Some of them left as children. Some of them left as children. And they grew to become adults because all the old adults died. Only a few, only Caleb and, 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 and Jacob and Joshua entered in. 
Now all the children grew into adults and became soldiers. But watch this. They were still wearing the little shoe they wore as babies when they left Egypt. As they were growing, growing old, as they become adolescent, God was increasing their shoe size that they wore. That is a mighty miracle that no man should overlook. Here they are. Of, if, if of all things we have heard about God did for them, the very fact that they showed the world as when they were three years old, two years old, five years old, and now they are 40 years, 35, 25, they still have the same shoe on. That is an unspeakable miracle of the grace and mercy of God. But here they are, afraid of the tempest that is called Goliath. This is what is happening to the other believers. They have Jesus, they read the word, and they stop at believing. They do nothing else. That's what we are going to do. Now the Bible say, let's continue. Because what you fear will eventually destroy you. Fear is the only thing that Satan has. Verse 12. Now, David was the son of that Ephratite of Bethlehem, Judah, whose name was Jesse, and he had eight sons. And the man went, and the man, and the man went among the men for an old man in the days of, of, of Saul. And the three other sons of Jesse went and followed Saul to the battle. And the names of his three sons that went to battle were Eliab, the firstborn, and next unto Abinadab, and third Shaman. And David was the youngest, and the three eldest followed Saul. But David went and returned from Saul, from Saul to feed his father's sheep at Bethlehem. And the Philistine drew near morning and evening and presented himself, himself 40 days. Here was the enemy tormenting the covenant people for 40 days. And just as said unto David, verse 17, Take now for thy brethren an ephah of this patch corn and these ten loaves and run to the camp to thy brethren and carry these ten cheeses unto the captain of their thousand. And look how the, thy brethren fare and take their pledge. Verse 20. And David rose up early in the morning and left the sheep with a keeper and took and went and Jesse had, as Jesse had commanded him, and he came to the trench as the host was going forth to fight and shouted for battle. And David, verse 22, ran, left his carriage in the hand of the keeper of the carriage and ran into the army and came and saluted his brethren. And as he talked with them, behold, there came up the champion, the Philistine of God, Goliath by name, out of the armies of the Philistines and spake according to the same words that David had them. And all the men of Israel, when they saw the man, fled from him, and we are so afraid. And David spake to the men that stood by him, saying, What shall be done to the man that killed this Philistine, and taken away the reproach from Israel? For who is this uncircumcised Philistine, that he should defy the armies of the living God? Oh, praise the Lord. You see what had just happened just now? David had received a revelation of God. David remembered that they are a covenant people, circumcised, and that covenant was purchased by the blood of man. In the Old Testament, when, 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 when Abraham circumcised himself by God's command, so that the thing that God has spoken concerning Israel, God will make it come good and make it come to pass. Joseph, uh, David understood that he was a covenant man. And that this so-called Philistine, Goliath, is uncircumcised. He's a man without covenant, without God, and without hope. That before the battle begins, the man is a dead man because it's God that will fight the battle. But David had only one thing. 
he didn't stop at believing. That is what we are going to talk about today. David actually took action and said it and talked about it. He testified about it and invoked the power of God. Now listen to the discouragement from brethren, his brother. And Eliab is Eliab's brother I had when he spake unto the man. And Eliab's anger was kindled against David. And he said, why camest thou hither? And with whom hast thou left those few sheep in the wilderness? I know thy pride and the naughtiness of thy heart. For thou art come down that thou mightest see the battle. And David said, what have I done now? Is there not a cause? That is the point here. It is not a cause, and here is the cause. The cause is that this uncircumstanced Philistine has defied the army of Israel. He has defied the God of Israel. And David is a covenant man. He believed in his God, and he believed in the cause of God. And the cause of God was bigger than David. And David agreed with the word of God and the covenant word of God and the curse of God. And because of that, God backed him. That is faith speaking there. Because David agreed with God with what God said, not the challenges that they are facing. And because of that, God arose. Faith. When somebody said, have faith in God, what do they mean? Simply put, agree with God. I agree with Jesus. Jesus is your faith. He is ever present and he is the word. So when you read the Bible, what do you see? Example, the whole people, including the king, they saw obstacle, they saw Goliath. But David saw the covenant word of God. David saw Jesus Christ, who is the word. David remembered that God is a key, covenant keeping God and a covenant making God. That if he said it, it will make it good. And so can you. Praise the Lord. Let's just fast forward. Let's go to verse, verse 40. Let's begin from verse 39. And David gathered his sword upon his armor. And he asked her to go for he had not proved it. This, it was too much. He only needed the word of God. So let's go to verse 40. And he took his staff in his hand and chose him five smooth stones out of the brook and put them in a shepherd's bag, which he had, even in a script. And his sling was in his hand. And he drew near the Philistines. Watch this. Here is the key. And the Philistines came on and drew near unto David. And the man that bare the sheep went before him. And when the Philistines looked and saw David, he disdained him, for he was but a youth and ruddy, and of a fair countenance. And the Philistines said unto David, Am I a dog, that thou comest to me with thy staves? And the Philistines cursed David by his, by his gods. Because that man uttered that he is a dog, automatically God made him a dog. He will, dogs will eat, his, eat him up in that wilderness. Praise the Lord. And the Philistines said to David, Come to me, and I will give thy flesh unto the fowls of the air, and to the beasts of the field. Now listen to what David said. Then David said to the Philistines, Thou comest to me with a sword, and with a spear, and with a shield. But I come to thee in the name of the Lord of hosts, the God of the armies of Israel, whom thou hast defied. This day will the Lord deliver thee into my hand. And I will smite thee and, and take thy head from thee. And I will give the carcass of the host of the Philistines this day unto the fowls of the air, unto the wild beasts of the earth, that all the earth may know that there is a God in Israel. That is a covenant talk. There is a God in Israel. The God of Jacob, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac. There is a God in Israel. A covenant making and a covenant keeping God. Notice that David went to battle armed with the scriptures. He quoted 
the covenant word for this situation. He is not going there in his own strength. He is going with a revelation of who is backing him. That is what you should do when we are faced with tempest. David had a revelation of who is backing him and that is a covenant making and a covenant keeping God. And that covenant he will never break. Now the end of the story is that Goliath was slain by David, first with his link, and he took the sword and cut off his neck. The sword of the spirit, that's the word of God. You don't go to the enemy by keeping quiet. That means you're going to fight with your own strength. David went to the enemy by repeating the scripture, confessing the scripture to the situation. And the angels that ministers, God's mighty angels went to work and finished Goliath. And he fell face down and bowed to the God of Israel. And David cut off his neck. What does this tell you? The Israelites saw obstacle, a giant, a tempest, a blockade. But David saw covenant truth in the word of God. He received the revelation and David became king on the head of Goliath. So all those Goliaths in your life, whatever it is you know, they are begging you to demonstrate the scriptures and you will ascend to where God wants you to be on your head. All the obstacles for you to demonstrate the covenant word of God. Praise the Lord. That is example number one. Let's take second example, Luke chapter 8, verse 43 to 48. Luke chapter 8, verse 43 to 48. And I read, And a woman having an issue of blood 12 years, which had spent all her living upon physicians, neither could be healed of any, came behind him and touched the border of his garment. And immediately her issue of blood stanched. And Jesus said, who touched me? When all the night, Peter and they that were with him said, Master, the multitude turned thee and pressed thee, and said thou, who touched me? And Jesus said, somebody had touched me, for I perceive that virtue is gone out of me. And when the woman saw that she was not healed, she came trembling and falling down before him, she declared unto him all of the, and all, all to him before all the people for what cause she had touched him and how she, has, she was healed immediately. And he said unto her, daughter, be of good comfort. Thy faith had made thee whole, go in peace. Thy faith, what is thy faith? Your agreement with God as touching the world as touching Jesus, who is the word, has made you all. Agree with God, that is faith. It's not something abstract. He's ever present before you. As you pick the Bible to read, it's by privilege that you, you are reading his word that he's put in your mouth and repeating it to him. So in this two examples, that woman, by the law of that time, as she came out, as she's, she's had the issue of the blood, that is death. She'll be stoned to death. But she held on to the covenant word and will not be bound by the circumstance. Knowing that God is a covenant keeping God, she came. If I must touch him, I'll be here. And that happened. She was faced with a death situation, just like David was for Goliath. And today, a lot of people identify with her. No. That is good. But now stop identifying with her. You are now an agent of Jesus Christ right now. So put yourself in the book. Insert yourself in the Bible and touch his hem. Touch the hem of Jesus. Touch him. Touch the word. Get a revelation of Jesus by the word. And see things that no man can see 
and not to the other man. No, in him. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. So in closing, they did four things. What did David versus Goliath, what did he do? What is this issue, issue of issue, uh, this woman with the issue of law, what did she do? Four things. The first thing they did was this. Let me just, before I do that, let me just, let me just read this scripture. Let's open up the book, the book of 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 13. 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 13. The Bible say, we having the same spirit of faith, according as this is written, I believed and therefore have I spoken. We also believe and therefore speak. So they believe, they spoke. Now we know what to do. We don't stop at believing and keep quiet. Nothing will happen. We must confess the word. We must speak what we believe, regardless of the tempest out there. That is the contradiction that the enemy wanted to see, to truncate your destiny and oppose you and delay your life and your work of God. To delay your advancing, you, go. you believe you must speak. So what did two of them do in these examples? First one, they believed, but they didn't stop there. They took action. They spoke. They spoke. David spoke. He already believed. He knew his God. He has the vision, but he spoke out what he believed. To the situation, that's, that is Goliath. Whatever Goliath is in your life, speak to it. Speak to stuff. And then they acted what they believe, what they speak. They took a step forward. They acted it out. And as they took a step forward and acted it out, the anointing came upon them. And they received the anointing. And it was accomplished. Finally, they testified. You see, it's not your testimony. David is not the doer. He gave glory to God. He came in the name of the God of hosts, the, the Lord Jehovah Sabwa, Lord Commander of the Heavenly Host. The woman with the issue of blood testified of the testimony of Jesus. So they testify, and so can you testify of the goodness of God. What he has done for you. But there's a currency in the uh, we are seeing here. In these two situations, there were great contradictions that can even cause death. But in these two situations, they saw something different. They saw the promises of God that it is yea and amen, and that they are in the covenant. And because they are in the covenant, that this promise God will fulfill it for them right now, not later. Because we serve a God that is in the eternal now. Let me ask you, what do you see when you read the scriptures? What do you see when you read the scripture? We are discussing the spirit of sin and knowing. What situation are you facing in your journey of life? What is are you seeing in the book of life to address that situation? to take a nation, to say it, praise the Lord. All of this is in Christ Jesus. Now you know what to do. You say, Brother Ben, how can I be a part of this? How can I take advantage of these covenant blessings? Very simple. I'll show you. Second Corinthians chapter 6, verse 2. The Bible says, For he said, I have had thee in a time accepted, and in the day of salvation have I succored thee. Behold, now is the accepted time. Behold, now is the day of salvation. Today is your day. From this day, your life will be hid in the rock, the rock of your salvation. And you will begin to see it the way he sees it. And you will know things that no man can know. And you will see that the almighty God is your helper and is ever present. 
before you acknowledge that contradiction, recognize his presence first and do what we have just said. And you'll see the hand of God upon your life. Instant, praise the Lord. If you are blessed by that word and you receive it, shout a big amen. Now let us pray. Repeat after me. Heavenly Father, in the mighty name of Jesus Christ, I thank you for the, you are a covenant making and a covenant keeping God. I believe that Jesus Christ is the son of God. He is Messiah. He died for me on the third day he rose again. He ever lived, lived highly exalted in glory at the right hand of the Father. And he is my and he's not interceding for me. Lord Jesus, I receive you as my Lord and my Savior. Take my life and do something with my life. I believe that you are now the Lord and Christ over my life. And I ask you to give me the gift of the Holy Spirit. I believe I receive. I'm not born again. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. Praise the Lord. You are in. All these covenant blessings, they are yours now. Praise Jesus. Amen. Now, quickly, I thank God for your life and your family, for giving us the privilege to be able to reach you in your living room. If you have received that prayer and you pray this, if you have any far from us, please find a Bible believing church in your neighborhood. Enjoy. We're in New Jersey. And then try to get baptized quickly because you need that. It's very important. You need to be baptized quickly. Tell the servant of God in that house of God that you just give a letter to Christ and then you need to be baptized. That will help you in your Christian faith. And then return here as we continue to edify one another with the word of God. Praise the Lord. I thank you for the privilege that you have given us. Please be sure to share this message. Sow it forward. This is your kingdom assignment. And as you do, expect the hand of the Almighty to bless you. Praise the Lord. If you are in the New Jersey area, when we open, we'd like to see you. Stop by. We we'll gladly welcome you and we'll make you feel at home. To be our pleasure. So, I thank you again for joining us. My name is Brother Benjamin. This is the word today, brought to you by the Living Hope Christian Center. Please continue to stay here on this channel with us as we continue in this adventure, advancing the Kingdom of God series. The Lord bless thee and keep thee. The Lord. Make his face, the Lord make his face shine upon thee and be gracious unto thee. The Lord lift up his countenance upon thee and give thee peace. The Lord put his name upon you in the mighty name of Jesus. You are blessed today. You are blessed tomorrow. You are blessed forever. You are blessed in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Again, thank you for joining us. Let's share the grace together. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, the true fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us now and forevermore. Amen. Surely, Lord's goodness and mercy shall follow us all the days of our life, and we shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever and ever. In Jesus' mighty name, amen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Shalom.